Hey guys, welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. Here we are taking a look at Toge Max G that was developed by Cave Entertainment and published by Atlas in 2000. And the game was a Japanese exclusive. The game was also a sequel to Toge Max 2, which I have done a previous video on. So if you haven't seen that already, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description so that you can also go and check it out. This marks the third entry in the series of games and it was the final version to be developed for the PlayStation 1. As with Toge Max 2, this game is also a further evolution of the series when you compare it to the original game Toge Max or peak performance as it was known in other regions and essentially with the evolution this would be very similar to the likes of what the differences were between Gran Turismo 1 and Gran Turismo 2 where you could see the differences in terms of the visual quality and overall playability and visual aesthetics of the game and Toge Max G represents that in every shape and form because as with Toge Max 2, as it was a direct overhaul compared to the original title, Max G also further enhances all of those features with more impressive visuals, car models and refined handling elements and other characteristics that really make the game well balanced. So as with all of these features and the improved characteristics, one of the most notable improvements is the handling model of the cars in the series. Even though the handling physics were good in the first two games, the third game in the series has probably the best handling physics of any of the games up to this point where the gameplay is fast it's frantic but you have more balance and more control when you are turning cars into corners to take over drift style elements when you're putting the car into a drift it's easy to implement but it's still tricky to control but there's something really satisfying when you do master a drift going around a very sharp corner and being able to maintain it the whole way through without hitting or crashing anything so it can be very very satisfying but as with toge max 2 this game also visually is a stunning game and it's definitely one of the better looking if not one of the best looking visually impressive racing games on the system and it's a pity that this game was only released in japan like toge max 2 it was a japanese exclusive and the focus in this game in terms of the car selection it returns more of the focus back to the japanese cars graphics on the cars themselves are really really good they're almost comparable to a lot of other very popular games on the system. But not only that, even with the improved visuals on the environments, even the lighting physics as well, they really suit the tone of each course that you're driving on. With different types of background elements, when you're driving even during the daytime and you even have nighttime driving elements as well. So the lighting effects from even like street lights really do have a, a direct influence on where you are at any point in time through the races and they do reflect off the environment really, really well. Couple that with the car in question and the drift mechanics and even the handling physics as the handling has been improved as I mentioned to a point that it probably is the best game in the series with all of those elements combined and it's great to see that evolution of these type of games where sequels just keep getting better and better so this is definitely proof of what is possible and it really shows also what was possible with the PlayStation at that time again the graphics capabilities of the PlayStation was has been pushed to its limits. Developers were figuring out and understanding more about the console during its lifespan as at that point the console had been around for four or five, six years and it was beginning to show that the PlayStation visually was more capable of being able to produce high quality games and visuals than what was seen in early games on the system. As the cars themselves are very lifelike, even the lighting and the visual aesthetics are very, very lifelike and reflective of everything that goes on within the game. The one thing mainly to note, even from my own personal experience of having played this game compared to the other two games they're all really good games to play they are challenging but the third game here in the series is probably the most challenging of all of them as each of the races will require a lot of practice and finesse with the controls to really master the different drift elements and to maintain your speed and even get the best timings throughout each level because if you don't you can find yourself very quickly falling behind the pack in the races so that you're trying to play catch up and it can be very very hard to win races there's very little room for error in 
this game but that's not to say that you can't have a lot of fun with it this is a really fun game to play like its predecessors it's a very cool game to really get your teeth into and it does have a really good mix of loads of different style elements that if you're into something that has a good mix of drifting with arcade and especially with visual qualities this is definitely a game i think is worth playing but even most notably as well with the likes of the selection of the cars you have everything from the likes of toyota chase or honda civic even mitsubishi lancer evo 4 all very popular and iconic japanese jdm cars that were extremely popular from the mid 90s the early 2000s and this is another good opportunity to be able to play and have fun experience what these cars would be like play in an arcade style setting and even just to get an idea of what it's like to use the drift elements with these type of cars so it adds a whole more level of depth to the game but even when you look at the quality of the graphics even with the environments graphics are really good very very smooth like i mentioned lighting effects and even the environmental assets throughout each of the levels really are representable of each playthrough and it really suits the look and feel of the game as it makes it look very realistic and it, it just suits the overall mood and tone of the game and i have to say like even from my own personal experience of playing this here along with the previous two games this here is definitely one of the better racing games i've played on the playstation especially from japan and it really is a hidden gem so if you haven't played this game this is something i highly recommend that you think of and look into because you won't be disappointed again there is a learning curve to the game but don't take away from the fact that this is definitely one of the better visual looking racing games on the system hands down and a lot of people even myself included up until recently didn't even know that this game existed and to see it in its glory to see how visually good it really is it's definitely worth a play through hands down so i do recommend that you definitely look into this for sure as it does have so many very good qualities like i mentioned the visual the handling characteristics the drift style mechanics it also has a really good soundtrack even with the good mix of cars and selection of cars that are on offer but even with the likes of even the replays the replays in the game after each race are very cinematic they really do give a really good sense of depth to the overall racing experience even if you think you've had a poor race the camera angles that's used in the replays definitely do it a lot more justice you don't look as bad at driving as you would actually have thought when you're playing it so it really is worthwhile and you can save your replays as well so if you want to come back or just to see your skills improve you can definitely do that as well so there's so many cool elements in this game that is worth looking into like i mentioned so in my personal opinion definitely give this a go i highly recommend it and if you are looking and hunting for more of these type of games that were released in japan and you'd like to see more type of videos like this then be sure to stick around as i will be exploring a lot more of these unique style games that were released in that region so if you have enjoyed this video and again if you do want to see more of these style of videos then be sure to leave a like again make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be updated whenever future videos are released also be sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel where i have provided other reviews and gameplay videos of similar style games that were released in japan for the playstation 1 where i share my thoughts and experiences with everyone and until next time make sure to keep playing those classic games and enjoying them and keep those gaming memories alive